I now would like to uh, turn over the uh, floor to anyone here who would like to ask a question. Uh, please uh, briefly uh, state your name and just ask the question. My name is Sir Sunil Kumar. And sir, I use uh, my Facebook uh, for everything for news, for post. And sir, I'm not anti-national. And my father and my grandfather is, uh, my grandfather is already give service to Indian Army 23 years. And my father is also give service 18 years in Indian Army. But I post in Facebook everything about, like last day I post your photos. They said, why are you standing with anti-national and you are also anti-national. And everything that I post, uh, always messaging anti-national, sometimes threats, you came to India, we will tell you what, what is the real democracy. And I'm belong, uh, sir, from that place, from Pehlu Khan, there is assaulted in Behrod Alwar. I'm belong from Sir Alwar. So, so some, sometimes I, I get also a message from my village and from Behrod. Why are you posting about the Pehlu Khan? They are all our brothers. <laughs> they are going to jail. I, mean, I don't care about they are the, uh, going to jail, but they don't have any right to assault anyone, the name of animal. Because the human, humanity is the first. Before religion, before animal, before everything, humanity is the first. So my question is, sir, to you, sir, about the last time is happening the election from the electronic voting machine, EVM. So, sir, what do you think about that? This is constitutional or unconstitutional, sir? Uh, first, I uh, great to know about you, Sunil, and uh, you are the ideal uh, citizen, what I'm talking about. So, you are taking your views, you can, your views are based on rationality, compassion, and humanity, that one should not be killed by a mob, and mob cannot be defended uh, in the name of uh, village castes and in the name of religion or in the name of anything. So great that you maintain this kind of rationality in this environment. That is why I, I have a hope that there is Sunil, there is a girl in Chandigarh, there is a boy in Maharashtra. Uh, things will be better tomorrow. Uh, regarding EVM, I my views is different and it's based on uh, the judgment of Supreme Court of Germany. Uh, this kind of case came before the Supreme Court of Germany and the Supreme Court of Germany decides that, uh, that uh, since it is a machine and not everyone can understand how machine works, in any democratic process it is essential to have equality of participation. That is why when you go to cast your vote, election commission sanitize the entire space of polling booth. It provides a great deal of security, so no, can, no one can be threatened. And everyone can walk in to that polling booth and cast his or her vote. That is why in this context, it's very understand, it's very important to have understanding the process of election. Machine does not provide that kind of equal opportunity. You may be a software engineer, you can defend this machine, you can criticize this machine. I am not, an, not a soft, software engineer. I have to rely upon you that Sunil is saying that this machine is right, or Rakesh is saying that this machine is not right. So I can't make a rational opinion on my own. That is why on that basis this machine should not be used in election process. And I think the Supreme Court of Germany pronounced a rational judgment that machines should not be part of electoral process. Anything which requires a special knowledge to understand is against the equal essence of equal participation in the process of democracy. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Very interesting question, which is also relevant to us in the Philippines. We've had those issues. Before I ask a question from the floor, we have quite a number of questions that came in from Twitter, uh, uh, Ravish. One of them is, uh, what do you think is the greatest challenge to the Indian youth? 
uh, they are facing uh, many challenges. I, the biggest one is the education. Indian youths have been denied of better education. If you go to states and districts, the colleges are in very bad shape. We are not providing them a good education and good library, good books. So, so uh, unless they get a real and good opportunity to be educated in real terms, how can we expect that these youths will perform or will defend the norms of democracy uh, one day. So they are very, uh, the, the education is killing them. They are forced to take huge amount of education loans. They are not getting loans. They are not getting jobs either and they are paying EMI every month. So our youth is in a very bad shape. They are denied of basic educational right. Schools are in a very bad shape. Universities are in a very bad shape. So this makes a great challenge for them to, they spend entire life to overcome these challenges uh, created by the government colleges, the bad government colleges and private colleges are also in a very bad shape. So, so they, uh, after college, they are doubling their university life. First they spend half of the day in the college and rest of the day in the, in, uh, in the coaching centers. And they are paying fees uh, to the college also and to the coaching so centers also. So Indian youths are heavily exploited ones. I really feel bad for them. Uh, unless we liberate from the chains of this bad education system, Indian youths uh, will never ever be able to deliver the potential they have. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the floor? Our uh, chairman of the uh, Ramon Magsaysay uh, Foundation, Ambassador Quisha. Thank you for that very um, interesting presentation, uh, Mr. Kumar. Um, last year, I was talking to a former Magsaysay, or well, not a former, a past Magsaysay laureate. I will not mention his name. And I was commenting that I said the Indian economy seems to be doing quite well based on what we read in the media, international newspapers. And what he said to me, um, and I was really surprised, he said, don't believe what you read in the papers because it's not true that the Indian economy is doing as well as they report it to be. So I was quite shocked. He said, how can they manipulate those figures? Because the World Bank, the IMF, uh, can check out those figures. So, would you like to comment on that? Because uh, uh, newspapers have, uh, are screening the real news from the ground. So, if you, even today, if you uh, read the Indian newspapers, especially the vernacular one, uh, one uh, you will rarely find uh, critical uh, news about the job losses. Uh, there is a town in, uh, in my neighboring state, Jharkhand. Uh, there's an industrial town, Jamshedpur. And uh, the, locally they publish, locally they publish uh, that uh, more than 700, 800 factories have been shut down and 30,000, 40,000 have lost their jobs. But the same newspapers, uh, the national edition of the same news, news never travels from local to the national. Uh, so they just keep hiding in their backyard. So uh, now the ground reporting is, uh, is completely closed. If you go to the uh, prime minister's home state, Gujarat, uh, if you go to the Surat, I keep getting messages from uh, uh, traders of, uh, from Surat. Uh, they are involved in textile and diamond businesses. Uh, you will never find uh, a ground reporting from that place. Even they all are great supporters of our Prime Minister. They will support forever, even they uh, loses their entire business. Uh, but they also, they are so loyal, but they, are, they, they also are not getting a space in the national newspaper. They are also not getting a space in the national media. So 
you be a supporter or you be not a supporter, you are not going to get a, a space as a people story in the media. So business reporting is in a very bad shape. Some newspapers who have very less circulations are publishing and the, some websites uh, uh, like Money Control, uh, Mint uh, and, uh, and, and uh, Quints uh, and News Clicks, uh, they have business uh, stories uh, from the ground. But uh, mainstream media never publishes a critical story. And now the bad thing is that uh, before 2014, uh, you have uh, all kind of corporates who don't uh, black suit and black shoes <laughs> to look smart on the front cover of the magazines. Uh, suddenly I found, find that they don't have a voice because they lost the voice. They, are, they, have, they control the media, but their control have become a surrogatory control. The real control is the political master. So they, uh, they do not express their concerns very freely now. Some of them have concern in a very restricted manner uh, in, uh, in the past few weeks. Uh, so now what you do when business uh, stops uh, expressing their concerns, so you don't know, the textile industries uh, have to publish publish, had to uh, give a, uh, give a, uh, give a advertisement in the newspaper about their poor condition, that we are losing jobs and uh, the, our uh, industry is uh, going through these kind of such and such uh, uh, problems. But this should be covered by the newspaper. But they had to give an advertisement on the same newspaper. So, uh, so the, the real, the era of real stories is gone. Still there are journalists, there are stories which are coming out and being reported. That's a great thing. But uh, if you, if you uh, spread out on the large uh, broadsheets, uh, they will look like uh, small dots. Thank you. Uh, before uh, returning to the floor, there's a question here again from Twitter. What is the best advice that you can impart to the youth that would uh, like to advance the brand of journalism you practice, both in the grandest manner and within bounds of ethical journalism? We need to read a lot. We need to find uh, time for reading. And uh, we need to keep building our contacts with the real people, not only those who are in the corridors of power. We journalists tend to spend our life in the corridors of power and, and uh, work really very hard to uh, make them sources. But they can turn hostile any day. But if you work hard to walk into the corridor where people live, uh, you will always be able to get what is happening on the ground. Yes. In this time, there is, a difficult, uh, there is a difficulty for me. When I approach to the government for reactions, uh, they never reply to me. Then what do I do? Do I short, shut my journalism? No, I will never. So I do my proper homework and screening and uh, before publishing uh, news with uh, all kind of uh, details and uh, carefulness. But in, my advice is to keep writing. You, uh, when uh, there was, we had an editor, uh, Prabhas Joshi of Janasatta, uh, who, uh, who uh, took my name in one of his last interview that uh, I think he should be doing well in the future. Then I called him that, Prabhas Ji, uh, you took my name and everybody is calling and so much expectation, I am nobody. Then he asked me, uh, do you write? I told him that, yes, I write. Uh, sometimes I write. Then Prabhas Joshi told me that you must write 2,000 words a day. I think he was joking with me. And then I told Prabhas Ji, do you write 2,000 words a day? Uh, he said, yes. Then I started writing uh, 2,000 words a day. I, I write every day uh, 2,000 words less than. Uh, 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 2,000 words and up to 5,000 words a day. There are many days in a month uh, when I write 5,000, more than 5,000 words a day. 
but uh, basically I do write 2,000 words a day. Writing makes you clear. Uh, yeah, yeah, your thoughts clearer, your presentation clearer, and writing makes you bold. If you keep writing, there will be, uh, uh, will, uh, it will, uh, there will, uh, a mechanism will be built in your system, automatic mechanism, that that mechanism will force you to say what you want to say. Write what you want to write. So, uh, for that mechanism, we have to practice every day. Read something, and whatever you observe, write every day. Take your life, take your profession very seriously. Uh, you don't have to, but I also want to say uh, that please enjoy this life, which I didn't. Uh, I, um, uh, I want journalists to have their life also, to create a balance between work and uh, life. Uh, uh, this lesson I didn't learn, but I want them to learn that you also have a life to live. So be respectable uh, to your life, but be respectable to your profession also. Uh, you must have Sunday, but you must have Monday also. Thank you. Okay, very, very valuable lessons here based on experience in life. Um, any questions from the floor? Yes, please. Hello, my name is Jana. I'm from St. Scholastica's College of Manila. And sir, you authored a successful book entitled The Free Voice on Democracy, Culture, and Nature. From there you wrote, and I quote, fear is now the daily bread. We are all experiencing fear. It comes to us in many different forms, end quote. So my question is now, how has fear fueled you as a journalist, Mr. Kumar? Uh, as a person, uh, I'm, my first reaction, I, I do get fear. So I'm not, uh, 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 I'm not that brave that I, I'm not here to pronounce that, oh, I, fear does not affect me. It does affect me. But it practice of every day of writing, uh, taking situations uh, as they are coming makes me uh, bold. And uh, yes, uh, there are very there are uh, number of ways you can be uh, fear can uh, surrounds you. Uh, the first is isolation. Look, I am a single citizen, and uh, the entire ruling political party. Uh, who claims to be the number one political party of the world boycott my show. So this kind of isolation uh, creates an environment of fear around you. So you have to dispel that fear. Uh, it, is, it doesn't come, uh, what I realize that it, it, it is not uh, born with the nature that <laughs> one child, child from since childhood. Because I acquired this uh, uh, this force or the practice, the habit to dispel uh, the fear when I was surrounded by the fear. Earlier, I, uh, I was a, a very, uh, um, very, very fearful person. I uh, could not, when I go, to, I could not go to uh, late night movies with my friends. Then I thought that no, no, I cannot handle my. Uh, parents ire and um, uh, and someone uh, might uh, snatch my watch when I am uh, coming from the late night movie. Now uh, from that trans uh, from that to this uh, this uh, transformation takes a lot. Uh, it doesn't come with your uh, natural ability. You have to practice like you have to practice to become a citizen. You have to practice to become a brave. Maybe as a segue to that question, uh, is uh, how do you handle so much hatred and where does your courage come from? Because you said fear, so now where does courage your courage come from? Courage comes from them also, those who spread hate. So I can see when you fill this room with voices of hatred, I can see, or anyone can see, where is the space of love, where is the space of bravery. You will turn, you will start searching space to look at, to find out that little space. And that little space gives you courage 
to stand for compassion, to love and uh, to harmony against the forces of hatred. So I believe in that, that you cannot survive with the hatred. Those who are supporting in the name of nationalism, they must stand, understand that you cannot be creative, you cannot be productive in the environment of fake nationalism, environment uh, based on hatred. You have to be compassionate, you have to be uh, lovable, then only you can be uh, fearless, then only you can be creative, then only you can produce a great business, then only you can uh, produce a great literature, then only you can produce a great film also. Look at the Indian films. Most of the films now being released are heavily uh, added with the, loaded with the propaganda of the government. Earlier in 70s when Javed Akhtar Sahab and Salim uh, Javed created uh, anti-establishment uh, anti uh, image of the Amitabh Bachchan. Now there is no script writer or a director in the Bollywood who create a hero with, a, with an anti-national image. So there is, I don't see any new Amitabh Bachchan coming on the screen of uh, Bollywood. Rather, I see a superstar is coming to propagate the propaganda of the government of the day. So they are not a star. They are not a star now. So uh, even even the space of create creative space is being compromised. So look at the films uh, being produced by the Bollywood, and the singers are writing uh, the the songwriters are pathetic these days now. Yeah, fakiri kahan se aati hai? This I said to the Hindi audience. <laughs> I can't translate in English. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We will ask our uh, Indian friends later on their uh, definition. Other questions from the floor, please. Uh, there's one at the back. Yes. Please come. There's a microphone. Thank you. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Gillian Geronimo, and I'm currently a Master of Arts in Communication candidate at Lyceum of the Philippines University. Um, I also used to teach in college, and I used to be a pro-am journalist, so a professional amateur I write for uh, community papers. And my question is, I am currently writing my MA thesis on the topic of Philippine news and human rights. The thing with the Philippines is that the notion of human rights has been a little bit colorful in these past few years, if not several years. Um, now, with this, now, with this kind of wager, do you have any suggestion on how to empower citizens' uh, journalism to advance the tenets of democracy? Yes, I can advise many things, but I do not want to act like a doctor who prescribe, <laughs> who uh, never uh, uh, le leave a space empty on his prescription paper and who writes every kind of medicine. Yes, uh, we have to understand that uh, everyone has a, has a duty to work hard uh, to secure a place, to make this uh, democratic a uh, secure place. Uh, they, this, this work cannot be done by a journalist only, this cannot be done by a political leader all, uh, only, this cannot be done by a newspaper only. So, uh, uh, I don't know how and when uh, human rights uh, become a bad word uh, f uh, for us, for uh, mainstream media in India also. Uh, they talk about human rights uh, as a anti-national things and uh, they, uh, they uh, justify their act of inhuman rights and inhuman languages uh, in, in the name of these criticizing human rights. So uh, it has become a bad word and very easy thing uh, for anyone to scuttle democracy and uh, see um, human rights are violated everywhere. Even my uh, young uh, students uh, in India who are uh, appearing for the government's uh, examinations, uh, can you imagine the trauma they are going through? Uh, 
um, they are in distress and, and they are in panic, they are in suicide mode. They write every day uh, to me that they have lost hope, they have, uh, they sat uh, uh, in 2018, January 2018 for this and this examination and result is not coming out. My age is surpassing the limit of government jobs age and I am becoming uh, unemployable forever for any government job. So this is also a human right violation. How can a government take examination, uh, uh, take a, a complete, uh, take a four years to complete an examination? This is shameful. Uh, so, and that uh, uh, crores of uh, millions of Indian youths are facing today. So this is also a case of human right, but it's not being reported uh, through any uh, medium. So we have to uh, work really hard to make people understand that Human right is nothing but a democratic right. Thank you. Uh, someone was going to ask a question. Namaste, sir. Namaste. Uh, my name is Latasha Yadav and I am a medical student here. Sir, I would like to congrat congrat congratulate you first for getting this award. But, sir, the thing is, why would you like to do such things, such good things for the people who call you every time anti-social, anti-national. And the thing is, um, do you think our country is safer, more safer for girls? Because no offense, I feel more safe here than in India. So you realize the, whenever go out of the India and you travel in Europe and America, as a girl, you first realize that no one is staring at you yeah. and uh, they do have a crime against women but uh, in the general environment is such that uh, you have all kind of secure environment and you can be uh, so much creative in that uh, places. Uh, we uh, in India see from June, from January this year to June, end of the June, uh, the data produced in the Supreme Court that 24,000 girls have been raped uh, or molested, 24,000. And, uh, and the n nature uh, of the co and the justice delivery system is in a very bad shape. Uh, nothing to be proud of, uh, it's a very bad shape. And, uh, and there are so used and misused and every day. So Indian society uh, the Indian, uh, the condition for Indian women looks good on calendar and looks very good on religious day, looks very good on festivals. So they started saying that, look, we are treating women as a Devi, goddesses. But when the festival overs, <laughs> the trauma starts. <laughs> yeah, we have to, uh, uh, our Indian society uh, needs to be uh, Educated uh, feminism is very weak. We as a male needs to be questioned on, fem on the parameters of parameters which are not being questioned. Uh, uh, female in the home are accepting their dad as a god. Dads are not as a god. <laughs> so uh, the society is not very conducing. Con Indian society in general is not conducing uh, for women. I don't know. Many times I ask uh, uh, many girls that, how can you marry these Indian guys? <laughs> full of uh, caste feelings, full of regionalities, full of biases, full of patriarchy. How can you love them? <laughs> I don't have answer. <laughs> I would not have married most of the Indian men <laughs> if I were a girl. <laughs> yeah. Sir, actually you would have lived a better life. Uh, away from hatred, but you rather choose not to. Why? Uh, where you go, when you uh, surrounded everywhere, when the hate surrounds you everywhere, there is no space to risk, uh, to left to run away. So every place was filled with them. This is the reality of India today, and reality of the world in, uh, as uh, in general. So there was no uh, space to scope for runaway. Uh, that's why uh, every space was blocked, every road was blocked. There is, there were, I had left with one choice to fight. I know I may lose, 
I know I understand one thing very clearly that losing in, is not that important. If I may lose, if I uh, throw out of the news channel, uh, some government pressurized uh, my news channel and may throw out. Uh, till date, uh, they, are, they have been great uh, supportive for me uh, and they are paying uh, consequences for supporting me. Uh, I may lose uh, space, I may lose uh, uh, platform, but uh, I will say uh, to myself every day, uh, when I have a chance to fight, I did try. So failure is not that important for me. I know failure will come to me, I will fail. One cannot think that one person can turn the entire humanity uh, to at its will. It will never happen. So knowing that you will be uh, uh, embraced by the failure today or tomorrow uh, and uh, with that knowledge uh, fighting uh, becomes very interesting. <laughs> you uh, don't have expectations, you have just your, uh, 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 you just start acting uh, what you want to act for. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, note that uh, our uh, awardee has three lovely ladies with him today and uh, very brave to say the things you said. I think very good. Uh, for other questions, uh, there's one more at the back this lady. Yes, please. Um, good day, everyone. And congratulations, Mr. Kumar. I'm Justin Ray from St. Classicas College, Manila, and uh, editor-in-chief of our school newspaper. Oh. Um, press freedom is a concern in many countries. Um, were there intimidation, arrests, killings in relation to citizen journalists? Sorry, please repeat it. Were there intimidation, arrests, or killings in relation to citizen journalists? Yeah, uh, they are, um, they are uh, very vulnerable, uh, uh, they are in a very vulnerable uh, condition right now. See, uh, one of the biggest state of India, Uttar Pradesh, uh, uh, one of its district uh, uh, county, you can say, uh, one journalist reported uh, uh, how a school, a children's of a school being served uh, with salt, uh, bread with salt only, uh, uh, bread and salt only, in their midday meal program, which is the largest uh, midday meal program in the world also, for various days. Now this uh, uh, journalist, uh, the administration has filed an first information report uh, in the police station that this man is, uh, is, 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 uh, is, uh, uh, acting against the image of the state. So, uh, and uh, district as administration is questioning him. You write for a print journal, uh, print uh, newspapers. Uh, how can you uh, make a video of any situation? Uh, so, uh, in that context, many citizen, many citizens, journal, journalists have no protection today. Uh, uh, they don't have money to fight cases filed by the various uh, groups supported by the ideological uh, streams of the government. Uh, they are in a very bad shape. But uh, it's amazing that they are all fighting with no result in their hand. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yes, uh, this is a gentleman. Uh, sir, a very congratulations to you. Thank you. And uh, my name is Aniket Verma. And sir, uh, this award is like a very prestigious award and uh, this is a very proud moment for not you but for the entire Indians. Uh, sir, what I feel, I, very, uh, no, I mean, I feel very sorry that uh, my prime ministers who used to tweet every day haven't congratulated you. So I was like, I was felt very sorry for that. But my concern is, sir, that uh, is regarding the use of uh, social platform and specifically if I will talk it's about the Twitter. Sir, you have, uh, I mean you stop using Twitters and uh, even you come to know that uh, Anurag Kashyap is the very famous director and the youth like us, most of the youth currently enjoy his movie and he was just questioning the governments, the policies or whatever I mean on the daily basis and uh, he start getting so many threats and uh, hated and everything. 
And then he decided that even he is not going to write anything on the Twitter. So even he quit the Twitter writing anything. So I was like, sir, uh, my, uh, I'm in a state of confusion that uh, if a people even who start questioning to the government or the policies or anything, and if they stop using this platform, then who will, uh, I mean, who will ask the questions? I mean, because you cannot just uh, run away with this platform. This is very important. So uh, you have to, uh, yes, uh, one should use this platform to, uh, to question the government, but this is not the only platform. Uh, what I, I, uh, I have to uh, dedicate my time also. So I write a long article on Facebook and uh, then I uh, use my time to talk to the people in WhatsApp group. Twitter requires a different kind of creativity and time. You have to be reactive every time, every second. So I don't want to keep myself uh, busy in that mode, but yes, uh, but one, uh, you, uh, uh, you need to understand one process also. This social media is not making government accountable. These platforms are helping government to remain unaccountable. I am giving an example. Uh, there are 69,000 teachers vacancies in Uttar Pradesh and uh, half of the million, uh, almost half million applicants are waiting for the results and they are knocking every day door of the power that why their results are not coming out. Then they plan that let's trend our grievances on Twitter. So they went on Twitter all uh, and it it trend, they start trending 69,000 vacancies, it start, start trending. And when I was uh, going to my hotel, I received a message from a guy in Uttar Pradesh. He was very frustrated that, sir, look at this, we trend this our problem, but no one uh, listened to us and uh, our, uh, our question is unanswered. So, Twitter and Facebook creates an illusion of participatory democracy, but in real terms, it provides an opportunity to kill the democracy. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. And Prime Minister did not congratulate me. Let it be. <laughs> That's the biggest congratulations. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> that he <laughs> did not dare to congratulate me. <laughs> okay. He's a nice guy. A nice guy never congratulate me. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very uh, insightful, I think, uh, when you mentioned about Twitter and, and Facebook uh, uh, being, giving the illusion of uh, democracy. Um, other questions from the floor? Yes, please. My name is Mayank Lata. My name is Mayank Lata. I would like to ask uh, about the Indian economics crisis. Now the India is faced so much crisis in the, like the GDP is going down and down. Now the Modi Sarkar took the money from the Reserve Bank also. So what is the main reason behind this? Right now it's in a challenging uh, stage uh, since uh, 2000, November 2016, when demonetization happened, uh, the government uh, assured people that uh, in long terms things will be fine. And uh, can we say that we are in uh, September 2019 and it comes within that definition of long terms and that long terms arrived with such a bad news. So after demonetization, corporates have lost its uh, uh, sixty percent of uh, investment uh, uh, so uh, demands are in a very low shape but the GDP data shows one good thing also that uh, uh, the uh, the prices of uh, commodities is down so on infla inf inflationary terms uh, 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 the purchasing power is in rural area but they are not purchasing they are not buying anything uh, because the insecurity is so uh, real around. The all, uh, all sectors, manufacturing, 
real estates and uh, and textile all and automobiles all are uh, all are uh, uh, employment sector the giving employment sectors all are in a bad shape and after 2016 no sectors uh, recovered for a long term momentary uh, recover uh, happened uh, some sector performed well in a one quarter or two quarter but the continuity is not there so economy is in a very bad shape but uh, uh, there is no real discussion on it the discussion is filled with the all kind of propaganda and misreportings who will uh, report the, you know the situations in mainstream media so uh, the headlines have been uh, managed every day by creating event after event after event so our democracy uh, democracy has become a eventocracy so democracy uh, looks around the kind of event one uh, one one for uh, kashmir other month for chandrayaan other month for ram mandir the next month will be for some other issues and things will pass on five years has passed on five years will pass on yeah and sir i follow the one youtuber also dhuru rathi Yeah. he is also saying that the modi government also, also, uh, every time manipulate the real data uh, never y yes uh, the ex uh, economic advisor of modi government arvind subramanian presented a, uh, his lecture that uh, the real in real terms gdp is uh, below 5% uh, below 3% and uh, the government is not accepting that but the government data is saying that the 5% Uh, which was expected to be 5.7 percent, and uh, the if you uh, if you uh, meet uh, youths, uh, um, they you can find two compartments in any youth. Politically, uh, youths are with uh, Narendra Modi, and uh, economically uh, they are suffering a lot. So uh, um, by if you take that uh, since he is not getting job he will not vote for modi you uh, you might be wrong by assessing uh, in assessing them so politically he is a very successful man so uh, his popularity is intact and the same youths who have got very bad education very bad college very third class universities and not getting proper job good job are fully with him that's a strange phenomena happening and same youth is not asking him that please provide us uh, good universities uh, where teachers uh, can be uh, can have a good we, we can where we can have a good quality of teachers uh, where we can have a good quality of uh, transparent and secure examination system uh, every state is facing that but youth is not asking i think uh, uh, what can you do uh, when uh, uh, youth is stop uh, Uh, asking job or better education from the government, uh, but it's it's a great thing that uh, politically uh, the same youth who are uh, suffering uh, from bad education system, suffering from employment opportunities, are great supporter of prime minister. Yeah. And sir, my last that is his biggest achievement. Yeah. Last question is uh, any suggestion for the Modi and the Bhakt? No suggestion can can work for them, and <laughs> they are beyond suggestions. <laughs> Uh, yeah uh, see uh, if you uh, they are not at the fault entirely uh, they go to news channels every night and see uh, 90% of them uh, are saying in one voice so they tend to believe that they must be they tend they think that they are doing journalism they don't know that they are being manipulated so uh, andhaks are not at their fault also uh, i think when they get a pure and uh, authentic information uh, they tend to think also they think I, i'm not saying that they are not a thinking person uh, they think uh, we should not be saying that they, they do not have mind they have mind but they do not have a right information if these news channels 90 news channels start saying right thing and pure information this entire masses will turn to see the different kind of reality right now wherever they go where which channel whichever channel they switch on they see the same kind of reality and accept that this is the true because journalist is saying that how can i say uh, blame to him that 
he believes in journalism and he believes that the man who is speaking on television is doing his job. One day he will understand that uh, that man sitting on the TV set, in the TV set, was not doing his journalism, was not doing his job. But then damage will be done for two, three generations. Nothing can be, nothing can be rectified now. Thank you, sir. Now, it's beyond repairable. <laughs> Thank you.